Okay, so this is the brief tutorial for uh, Laboratory 2, Analyzing Material Culture. So you'll be able to read through this at your leisure, but generally speaking, the task is to put yourself in the position of being a lab assistant, working remotely during pandemic times for the Archaeology Collections Management Lab here at SDSU. Your boss, the supervisor, has sent you a, a link to a Google Drive folder, and here it is right here. So if you click that, and it takes you to this folder over here called Artifact Photos. And your boss has asked you to, uh, these are artifact photos of artifacts that were found in the basement with no provenience, no labels. We have no idea where they came from. They're just things that happen to be collected at some point from somewhere, and we have no idea what they are or, or where they came from. Your job is to take two of these that you like and try to learn as much about them as possible. Now, because we're doing this remotely, we don't have the luxury of being able to look at these uh, objects in person. So uh, what we're gonna have to do is to deal with the photographs. And so what you can do is I just double clicked on it and then you can scroll through the images using these uh, keys on the right. <clears throat> and you should pick uh, some images that you like. So click a forward, let's say you like this one. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is to download this. So you go to this upper right corner and click download. And um, this one's called Artifact 5. And find a place in your on your computer. I'm gonna stick this in a new folder called uh, 302 Lab 2 and uh, save it like this. And so you're gonna to wanna to do two artifacts. Uh, you know, I'm just gonna do these two, but look through all of them and pick ones that you're kind of intrigued by or that interest you in some ways. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is open that folder. I have this little thing that says show in folder and it pops the folder up right there, but if you know where you downloaded them, open up the folder. And you wanna open them up in uh, some sort of image viewer. Your computer probably has one um, the one that shows up in, uh, in the Google Drive is okay, um, but for whatever reason, you can't zoom around in it. So the, um, you know, whatever image viewer you have that lets you zoom in on the object, that's going to be particularly useful. Now, you'll notice that if you zoom in too far, you're going to start seeing the pixels and they're going to get blurry, right? So there's a natural scale or resolution uh, that some of these images were, were photographed at that's going to limit how far you can zoom in. But some of them you can actually zoom in quite far. So you're going to want to zoom in as far as you can and get a sense just sort of qualitatively at first about what you're dealing with. What's the raw material that it's made out of? How big is it? They should all have scales in them. So you can see this is five centimeters down here. So this artifact is somewhere in the realm of like three or four centimeters. In this particular case, you're looking at a front and back of this particular artifact and they've Kind of digitally put the front and back together into one image. Not all artifact photos are going to be like that. Here we just have the front, so we don't have the ability to look at the back of this one. Um, here we have the scale, and you can see each one of these is a centimeter, so you can figure out from that, right? So the first thing that I'm asking you to do in Lab 2 is to do an initial qualitative attribute analysis. Download the images, open them up in your image uh, software, look at them, describe what it is, try and figure out what you think you're looking at. You could say for this one, it's like a figurine or something like that. Zoom in, observe, find textures and colors. Just write down everything you can think of when you're, when you're looking at this particular uh, object. And again, these are qualitative. You're not necessarily measuring it with a calipers or something like that. You're just saying it's kind of big or it's kind of small. It's made out of clay, it's reddish. Uh, it appears to depict a person, this kind of stuff. And then I want you to do a general sketch of it. And I know it seems weird to have a photograph and then draw a sketch separately, but the reason being is that I want you to annotate it. So it's easier to do that if you're doing a drawing anyway. If you're nice, uh, if you have nice graphic software, you might be able to annotate it over the image. That would be fine with me. I don't necessarily need you to practice drawing something. Um, Drawing is fairly common in archaeology, but obviously digital methods, we can do digital annotations if we want. But I want you to annotate it, the drawing or over the photograph, 
and say like this attribute reddish color and then draw an arrow and like human face and draw an arrow or something to it. Or over here you can say this is the base and you can draw an arrow to it. Uh, this is the edge and you can see the chip marks. You can draw an arrow to that. So I want you to do that on your drawing. Examining for any kind of useful wear marks or marks that indicate how it was made or constructed or used or stylized or something like that. Okay. Once you do that, what I want you to do is to move forward uh, to the quantitative analysis. Oh, and the other thing I want you to be aware of is the way they photograph this. This particular artifact here, they've used uh, kind of uh, raking light to draw some shadows so you can see these flake scars a little bit better. Some artifacts will be shot in flat light. So this one is shot in flat light to minimize the shadows and to increase the accuracy of the colors. And you can see they've included a color bar down at the bottom. So depending on the purpose of the photo, you can do or you can see certain attributes better or worse. So for this one, they wanted to highlight the shadows so that you can see the flake marks. And on this one, they wanted to decrease the shadows so you can judge the color and the overall shape a little bit more accurately. So depending on the lighting, you'll be able to do a better or worse job at that qualitative analysis for certain attributes versus other attributes. But once we've done that, we want to move on to quantitative attribute analysis. Now, obviously it would be great if these were scanned in 3D. We could measure pretty much anything we wanted about this. Um, we're not going to be able to measure the mass or the weight of it, but we can definitely measure dimensions like width and length. Um, depending on how the photographs were taken, we can measure just from one side width and length or sometimes we can measure from multiple sides or views and we can get more dimensions than we can for other artifacts that were not photographed in that way. Now you don't have to get a ruler out and try and get this image to scale on your computer screen. We're going to use a tool called the Elite Photo Measure Tool. It's an online tool um, and it looks like this. It's it's a little bit clunky, but it's pretty cool because all you have to do is to uh, get the image uh, file. So let's take uh, image 00, artifact 006, and you just drag and drop it onto the web page, hopefully. Whoops. And it shows up down there. And now what you want to do is um, you have to calibrate the measurement tool in there. And so the first thing that you do, you can kind of read through some of this stuff, uh, is to click on the scale to essentially calibrate the image. So what we're going to do is we're going to put five there because that's this five centimeters over here. And then what we're going to do is to click on this guy right here. Where did it go? Clicking and dragging. Sorry, what I meant to say is to click and drag. See, I always have to remember. Click and drag a line on the scale. So now you can see how it shows up. This line equals five centimeters, right? So that's the first thing we've calibrated it. Now we can do measurements on this. So we can determine what uh, dimension we want to measure first. Now this is a lithic. This looks like it's oriented for a purpose. So we could say what we're going to do is measure from here to here. And if we hit uh, control, I believe, we can snap at particular angles so that you can go perfectly straight up and down. And there we have a measurement of 3.3 centimeters and it saves all your measurements down here. And then we can go over here where it seems like it's the widest and I can drag it. And again, by hitting control, I can snap it to perfectly horizontal. And now I have 2.74 and that shows up here. So now we have a length and a width. 3.3 and 2.74. We could also measure a diagonal if we wanted to, like so. 
4.14, and we can measure the other one if we wanted to. We can measure whatever we wanted to on this one. Um, and we can measure the width in multiple places. Again, I'll hit Control so that it's perfectly horizontal. So you can decide what it is that what dimensions you want to measure, and it will be different for each kind of artifact. Um, but the first thing is you got to put in the scale, and whatever the photo scale is, you draw your first line there, then you type in how many centimeters it is, right? Five. And if I change this to, let's say, 10, you'll notice all the measurements are going to change. So this is super important that we calibrate it correctly in the beginning. And now we have all of these measurements. You can actually copy them to the clipboard and paste them right into your, uh, to your write-up if you wanted to, or you can write them out by hand. It's up to you. So that's how you're going to do the quantitative measurements. You're going to do this for both of your artifacts. Then you're going to want to do uh, color, quantitative color analysis. And I'm giving you two tools. <clears throat> One is a little trickier, but it's more comprehensive. It's called Image Color Summarizer. You click here for the link. And the other one is a little simpler. Um, it's called imagecolor.com. So let's talk about the first one, image color um, summarizer. And here, I'm not sure if you can drag and drop onto it. No, you cannot. So you're going to have to uh, click the choose file. And then for me, I can drag it into that box. Um, or you can just navigate to where you downloaded your images. And you can open it up. And in this particular case, what it's going to do is actually something called k-means color clustering. It's going to find a series of colors that are the sort of most um, prevalent colors in the image. And so you can predetermine how many groups you want to find. Here it's five colors, uh, major colors. And then you can hit process image, and it will chug through it in the background. It will show you your image over here, and then it will show you the clusters and the colors that it has found. Obviously, in this particular image, the background is black, so the first, the largest cluster is going to be black. <clears throat> and it will tell you that this is RGB value of 111. And that is red, green, blue. Um, and when you put them together in 111, values of 1, you get the color black. Then we have a variety of grays, right? We have a gray that's described as 91, 90, 89. Uh, we have a gray that's 133, 130, 130. We have, obviously, uh, these descriptive Tin Pan Alley Battleship Gray windswept. We're going to prefer the RGB value of 132, 132, 130, uh, or 38, 33, 31, for example. And you can actually even look, there's some other crazy stuff down here, histograms, and you can look at the, the different areas that are clustered on these, um, you know, these little tiny thumbnails down at the bottom. The, the thing about this is that you may have to go back and say, well, I wanted to have more than that. I wanted to have 12 different colors. And so then you run it through again. And it takes a little bit of time, but it will show you 12 different colors now. And the percentage, this is the, the area, uh, uh, the number of pixels in the image that are that color, right? And so we can go down and we can get down to 1% we still might not get the exact pixel that we want. So this may be overall kind of cool because we get um, broad swaths of color automatically from the image and it sort of normalizes them or averages them out for us. But it can be a little confusing. And also if we wanted specifically this color right here, it's hard for us to get. So the other tool is that imagecolor.com color pickle, uh, picker, color pickle, color picker. And here, you again can just drag and drop the image over it. And what we can do is we can specifically click on the image in different places, and it will tell us the RGB value and show us what the color actually looks like over here. And so we can actually say, if I'm really interested in this part of the image, I can click on it and get it you know, exactly down to that particular pixel. The downside of this is that you know adjacent pixels are going to be slightly different. So you're going to have to click multiple times to kind of get an average-ish value or a value that you feel is the, the sort of medium median value for that area over here. You'll notice I'm asking for the RGB values, but that you see HSL 
and CMYK, among other things, including hex. These are all systems of describing color. So RGB are red, green, and blue, and when you mix them in those proportions, it makes the color. HSL is hue, saturation, and lightness. The hue is the number of the color from a table of hues. So in this case, it's kind of a grayish browny color. And then it's 8% saturated. So that means <clears throat> how intense is the color. And it has a 56% luminosity from very, very bright to very, very dark. It's somewhere in the middle, all right? So it's not very saturated. It's kind of washed out. And it's sort of just medium reflectance. And whatever the color is, it's color 35. CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and then K is brightness. And here it's 0% cyan, 5% magenta, 12% uh, yellow, and 40% brightness in this. So it depends on whatever one you want to use. Um, image color sub, uh, summarizer also has them. HS view is hue, saturation, and value. LCH is another one, luminosity, and then I can't remember the rest of it. LAB is a weird one where they separate two color channels called A and B, and luminosity is separated there. And hex is the, you know, essentially internet shorthand for specific colors. Probably the RGB is the easiest one for everybody to understand, so that's the one I'm asking you to do. So what I want you to do is this: do those uh, uh, measurements, you know, the dimensions and the color, and then note them down, uh, you know, quantitative measurements, note them down in your notes. And then I want you to do in your write-up, you have this very specific set of questions your lab director wants you to answer in a brief artifact report, one paragraph per artifact. And then we're going to make a digital museum collection about what we can learn from artifacts with no provenience. And so you need to take the information from your notes that you distilled into your report and then turn them into a, a layperson friendly blurb that would accompany the photograph of the image on this digital collection website. So here's an example for you to sort of figure out what that would look like. Chipped flint tool, Paleolithic period, if you can figure that out, or unknown period, if you don't know it. And then a little blurb that you uh, uh, describe the artifact and what it might be used for. And then finally, at the very end, I want you to just reflect on the process, the qualitative versus the quantitative, the report versus the blurb, and what you really can learn from artifacts that have no provenience, no context whatsoever. Attached to the end are some artifact description sheets that you can use if you want to print them out. You don't have to use them at all. Um, these are would be what we would have used if we were doing the lab in person. But since we're doing it digitally, you can do it in whatever format you want. Google Doc, write it on a piece of paper and scan it, uh, you know, mix and match with a graphics program, whatever works for you.